Welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, I wanted to take a look at some new software written by Mark, M0IAX. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Hey, before we get to today's video, I've got to give a shout out to Stephen and Carl. Those two guys are my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you guys would like to support the channel as well, I'll leave a link down in the description below. If you've been following the channel for a while, you may remember the GPS utilities that Mark wrote uh, and I did a video on a few months back. So, uh, same author, but some brand new software to help us out with different messaging uh, in JSA Call. So, I'm going to close that. Here's the new one right here. Uh, and we'll get to the install portion of this in just a minute. But let's do a brief run-through of it. First, you can select what type of message you want to send through JS8 Call. Now, this doesn't cover the regular messages within JS8 Call. This is extra things uh, that are kind of add-on uh, features. They can be done without any interface whatsoever, but the syntax can be a little bit complicated. So Mark wrote this software to kind of simplify everything for us and make it super easy to get messages into different systems. So right here at the very top, you'll see uh, a drop-down box so we can choose what type of message we want to send, whether it's email, SMS, or APRS. So we'll just go ahead and choose APRS for this one. And I'm going to give it uh, my base station uh, gateway here. So KM4ACK-2, and we'll just say test. Now, there's two different ways we can do this. We can click Set JS8 Call Text, which will just send the message over to JS8, and then we have to move over and manually transmit it. Uh, typically, that's the way I prefer it. Uh, but if you know you're already on a clear frequency and ready to go, you could click Transmit with JS8 Call, and as soon as the message was sent over to JS8, then it would go ahead and automatically transmit out. But for this little experiment, let's just say set it with JS8 call or set it to JS8 call text. So after we press it, it'll take uh, somewhere between three and seven seconds typically before you're going to get uh, feedback telling you that it's ready to be transmitted. We'll see a little pop-up box here in just a second as soon as this completes. And there's your pop-up box. So we can just say OK right here. Now let's bounce over to JS8 Call. And you'll see our message right here in the uh, window ready to transmit. So I'm just going to move my... Um, I'm going to move over a little bit on the waterfall. And we'll go ahead and send that out. Now it's going to take it roughly a minute to send this out. Uh, and that's the thing with JS8 Call. Uh, it, it, it's kind of slow for getting things out. So you want to keep these messages... Uh, as brief as you possibly can because not only is it your message right here which in this case was just test but we've got a lot of extra information that has to be transmitted out as well so this tells me it's coming from my station I'm directing it to everybody with the all call and whoever hears it is going to feed that into the APRS system and once it's fed into the system, it's going, uh, in this case, to my call again with the dash 2, which is the SSID for my gateway. And then we have the actual message here. And then a sequence number at the end. And then these last three characters here are a checksum that's generated automatically by JS8 call. All right, well, there's the message uh, transmitted out. So the cool thing about this software, again, is it simplifies this. You don't have to remember all of this right here in order to make it work. Mark has made it super simple to generate the correct syntax needed to get this message out. Okay, so I went ahead and moved over to another system so we could uh, go through the install procedure together. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi 3 running stretch. Uh, and I think there's only one minor difference between Stretch and Buster. Uh, and Buster actually might be a little bit easier. But let's do it on Stretch since that's kind of the hard way. So we'll open up a terminal window and let's go ahead and move to our downloads directory. 
Now let's head over to GitHub and get the script uh, so we can download it to our system. And guys, I'll leave a link to his GitHub right down in the description below. Once you get to his page, let's go ahead and click over here the JS8 call APRS messaging interface. And then we're going to click right here on the Python script. And one more click right here to get into the raw text of the script itself. Then we'll go up to the top and we'll just uh, go ahead and copy that address and head back over to the Pi. All right, now that we're on the Pi, let's use our wget command and let's go ahead and paste in that address that we just copied. All right, so if we list that out, we'll see right here that we do have the Python script on our, uh, or in our folder here. So let's go ahead and make that executable. So the next command will be sudo chmod plus x. And then I'm going to just start typing the first few letters of the script, APR, and then hit the tab key on the keyboard, and it will autocomplete for us. We'll press the return key, and we just get dumped back out to the command prompt. Now, if we press ls, or I'm sorry, if we run ls again, you'll see that that is now in green. Now, if we try at this point to run that script uh, with dot forward slash aprs, you're going to see that we get an error here, uh, an import error, and we have no module named PSUTIL. Okay, so I'm going to kind of uh, go about this the long way, hoping you guys might can uh, learn something through this as well. Now, I know exactly what we need to install, but let's assume for a second that I didn't. We can always search uh, for different packages using the following command. Let's use sudo apt-cache space search p-s-u-t-i-l since this is the one that we're missing that's what i'm going to search for over here we'll go ahead and press return and we'll give that just a second to bring in the different results uh, that we might want to download all right now in this case uh, just because i've played with mark script and i've read a little bit about it i know that he's using python 3. so if we look right here we'll see Python 3-PSUTIL. And that's the one that we need in this particular case. So let's use sudo apt-get install uh, Python 3-PSUTIL and go ahead and hit the return key. And we'll give that just a couple of seconds to install. Um, Okay, well, it didn't ask us if we really wanted to do it this time. It just went ahead and did it. A lot of times you'll get the uh, yes or no, do you really want to install this? Uh, but in this case, we didn't have to do it. So we'll give this just a second to finish up, and we should be ready to go. Okay, now that that's finished, I'm just going to clear the screen out here. And once again, we will do the dot forward slash APR. We'll hit the tab key on the keyboard and hit the return. This time, you see the message box pop up. Now, I don't have JS8 call uh, running on this system, but if we did, we could go ahead and do it just like we did in the beginning of the video and get that text sent over. So I hope you guys find this helpful. This is some really uh, fantastic software that Mark's put out again. And once you get it downloaded and installed, it should make it super simple for you uh, to send messages through JS8 call to the various uh, systems. Now, I did mention that there was a difference uh, with Buster. The difference with Buster is I think that Python 3-PSUTIL uh, comes installed with Buster. So you may not actually have to do that step, or if you do run that step, uh, it may tell you that that is already the newest package available. So that, that might make it a little bit easier on Buster. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a comment below if you've got a question. Give us a thumbs up, and we will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.